this is Stacy Eldridge. Welcome to Captivated. This world vies for our attention in a thousand different ways. But the most important thing, the preeminent thing, the essential thing, is to give our attention to Jesus. Welcome, dear ones. Stacy here. I'm so happy to be with you, you who are the treasure of our Jesus' heart. I pray the blessing of heaven over you today, that in every way you may be tested or tried or being harassed by the enemy of your heart, that in that you rest in the provision, the power, the safety, and the love of God. He has not and he will not let you go, ever. I have a very special guest with me today, and I'm going to read you her bio before I introduce her to you, but you're going to know because I'll say her name. I have with me Christy Knuckles today. This woman, this beautiful woman, this three-time GMA Dev Award winning worship leader, singer-songwriter, author, and podcaster, wife, mother, sister, daughter, has been a worship leader for over 25 years. And she would tell you that her heart is to simply lead others to connect and communicate with the living God. Christy began writing music and singing in the church at a young age as the daughter of a pastor in Oklahoma. And she met her musician husband, Nathan, in 93 at the Christian Art Seminar in Estes Park, Colorado. Yay, Estes Park. And they married in 95. (laughs) They later formed the Christian music duo that I'm sure you've heard of, Watermark touring nationwide and recording five acclaimed albums, including seven number one radio singles from 98 to 2005, before laying down their watermark journey for the sake of their family. Christy and Nathan were also among those invited by Louis and Shelley Giglio to be a part of the very first Passion Conference in Austin, Texas in 97, which flourished into a fruitful 20 years of the couple songwriting and leading for the Passion Movement. Christy's voice and heart can be heard in songs like Waiting Here for You, as well as their songwriting featured on church anthems like Lord, I Need You. She now records for Keeper's Branch Records, the couple's independent record label, where they've enjoyed releasing fan favorites like Be Held, Lullabies for the Beloved. And Christy also launched a podcast in 2016 called The Glorious in the Mundane, which is intentionally focused on helping women in any season of life. Find the wonder and awe of God in the moments of their here and now. Side note, it is so good. And don't worry, I'm going to put all of this in the show notes so that you can tune in fine, find her. You're going to want to. Christy and Nathan live in Franklin, Tennessee, where they love to gather around the farm table and even make music with their three children, Noah, Eliana, and Annie Rose. They also love to spend time making their home affectionately called Keeper's Branch, a place of rest for all who gather there. That is so beautiful. Welcome, Christy. Thank you so much. (laughs) Did that make you blush? (laughs) (laughs) A little bit. Um, I'm still wiping tears from when you prayed beforehand, but yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I'm so um, excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I was actually wiping tears in preparation for this time with you. So, yes, God, I am, I am truly honored to have this time with you. Um, you and your husband have been leading John and I to the throne of God since the beginning. We actually open our captivating retreat, which we've been having for 22 years, with waiting here for you. Wow. Yeah. I love that. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it helps all the women open up their hearts and let Jesus know wow. that he's the reason. He's why we've gathered. It's all about him and for him. And we stand and we wait. And oh, he has always been so faithful to come. Mm, yeah. So thank you. Mm. In 2017, I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, mm. You wrote the book, The Life You Long For. Learning to Live from a Heart at Rest. And friends, it is lush and filled with wisdom and invitation. It's it's stories from Chrissy's own life and journey, but it always pulls back the curtain on our glorious God. So I'm going to take you back there 
you know, now I'm going back probably eight years because it takes so long to write a book and then have it actually be published. What moved you to write it? So this is a huge part of my story, really, of the Lord coming after my heart. Um, You know, I fell in love with Jesus when I was really little. I was saved when I was seven. Um, You know, I even recently have just thought about, uh, I just told my friend this. Actually, I'm at her house right now because our internet is so terrible. I have to like come to her house to do (laughs) podcasts. Thank you, friend. I know, Megan. Um, But I was telling her, um, I've been having all these memories lately of uh, making mud pies in the backyard and um, really just, I I know that that was when he started coming after my heart and that was right around the age that I gave my life to him. And I was actually, I'm getting into the book thing, but I, I was saved actually through um, this little, we, we had these wall plaques in our house. You might've had them. They're like very eighties and they each had like uh, uh, the family member's name and then a scripture. Ooh. And um, mine was Christy follower of Christ, which is the meaning of my name. And then my scripture on my wall plaque was Psalm 37, five is commit your way to the Lord, trust in him. And he, um, he shall bring it to pass, which I didn't know later that that was like right in the middle of like a really amazing passage of passage of scripture that the Lord was going to bring me back to, um, in this time that kind of started where I, you know, start the story in my book, but it's sweet, you know, that like, I I think, you know, when I I fell in love with the Lord, I gave him my life, you know, and as we grow, I think that so many other loves begin to get in the way. And those are often really good things, you know, they're like even gifts from the Lord can get in the way of what we're truly longing for, you know? And I think I I would say for sure that like, I, I think even some of those gifts in my twenties and thirties, as I grew in the Lord, even they became like a hustle for lack of a better word uh-huh. of me trying to find the life in God that I truly wanted, but I tried to find it in him by doing things for him right. rather than from him. Mm. And so I knew how to sing for him all day long, but I didn't, I could say for sure, even in early motherhood, which is kind of where the book starts, I didn't know how to even sit with him. You know what I mean? It was like, I could do all these things for him. But what he was calling to was true life in him. And so I kind of start the book by telling you about cleaning a toilet in the upstairs bathroom and him meeting me there. (laughs) So beautiful. Um, Not that I was cleaning a toilet, but just that he really will meet us anywhere. And um, I love, you know, it says that in scripture, or I've heard it said that, you know, that the men always went out to meet the Lord, they were on a journey. They were, you know, the burning bush or they were out in the field. Whereas like God always came to meet women in the mundane, like at the well or right where they were. And Mm -hmm. that definitely happened for me that day. And I had hit a wall. Basically the Lord used that hustle really, you know, to get me to a place of, I, I find that like, it was so merciful of him to to honestly allow me to hit a wall of exhaustion. Yes. And I couldn't do all the things, especially with now I had two littles at the time. Mm. We ended up, you know, we had three, but um, I was just so desperately. I wanted to make him known. I wanted to live for him and to glorify him. But I learned in that season, and this is a lot what the book is about, is just that about what he really wanted from me and what he wants is for us to just be his. And so it was in that season where the Lord actually took me back to the verse, how I was saved, Mm. um, Psalm 37. And so I was cleaning the toilet that morning. I knew, you know how, when you just, you're longing for something, my desires were shifting in that season, which I always know too, that, that I've learned that's him. Um, he's coming after us when there's a shift in desires and a lot of my desires at that time, I wanted to get off the road. I wanted to slow down. I wanted to be present with my kids. I knew I was going to miss it Uh if I did not slow down. And so the whole book is just the story of how the Lord met me that morning at my farm table 
um, I call it my farm table epiphany of him. Just, I opened, I, I did that thing where I was, I was so desperate to hear from him. I just let my Bible fall open wherever it would. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it fell open to Psalm 37 and I went right to the verse before the one that was on the wall plaque when I was little, which is, we all know it. It's delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Uh. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. This is the rest of that uh, verse that was, you know, started on my plaque there in the house, but like he will make your righteousness shine like the dawn and the justice of your cause, like the noonday sun. And I'll never forget as I just sat in that scripture, I heard him in my heart of hearts. He said, Christy, just hit the bullseye mm. and I'll take care of all the outer rings of your life mm. and I'll show you my glory. And he began to just at that moment in my life, just call me in that bullseye. I think you guys would say that's life in God or, or remaining in him. I think the call was like, Christy, I know you're trying to do all these things for me, but I just want you to be with me, to learn, to literally be found um, in the mundane, yes. to find my presence there and and be with me, remain in me. And then I'm actually going to show up in all the other stuff in ways that you can't even imagine, you know, or arrange so for. that's yeah. what led me to write the book. And yes, and that's kind of what the book is all about of just like, that journey and that season of him coming after me in a pretty big way. <laughs> so That is the best. That is the <laughs> best. Cause that's everything, you know, the center union with God, right. oneness. Yeah, right. I love that. He is, he's not after what we do for him. He's, a, he's after us, our hearts that he wants that with us. I just, I love the parable or not the parable, the story of Mary and Martha, just yeah. that how Ma Martha can, um, present a distracted bride who is doing good things for him, but has exchanged relationship with him for duty mm -hmm. for him. And then you've got yeah. Mary who says, no, 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 this is the one thing. I'm setting my gaze on him and that yeah. that's what he wants. Yeah. That's really amazing. It's the mm. best news. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. You, yeah. you expand the definition because a lot of times when we use the word, okay, we're going to worship Jesus and we do that mm -hmm. with our hearts and with song and it's beautiful. But what one point in the book, you say that we're meant to worship him with our lives. Can you unpack that mm -hmm. a little bit? Hmm. Yeah, goodness. I mean, I just think about um, even learning to, you know, bring whatever might be troubling us even this morning. You know, I, I yes. had kind of a just crazy morning and mm. um, we probably all did. <laughs> um, but even worshiping in, in that of like, okay, this, you know, whether it's the things that, that are weighing on us could be relationships, could be just our mothering, it could be you know, just anything that is clouding our, <laughs> I know my brain just sometimes can just feel clouded. And yes. I learned that even it's worship just to even sit with him in the quiet and in his presence and literally just release all of that to him. And even I think really l loving him above any kind of answer we're waiting on, mm. any kind of outcome we feel like we need mm. that day. Um, it truly is, you know, worship in that where it's like, like Romans 12, just like living sacrifice of like, Lord, I, I give my, all of me to you. Um, and even my to-do list today, you know, whatever it is, I've learned just truly looking to him and trusting him in all things and releasing all things to him. I feel like for me, that's what like worshiping with my life looks like kind of in the day to day. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. A practice that John has invited me and others to do is in the midst of the moment and no matter what it is, if it's a moment of, of severe pain or loss, yeah. confusion, um, anxiety, to, yeah. to enter into it, to feel it, and to love him from there. 
to, yes. f- to not r- feel it. Say, I love you, God. I love you, God. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. just what you're saying about it. he is higher and and yeah. turning our attention. It, maybe maybe the feelings don't immediately go away or the pressures don't end, but right. But he is there. It's so good. That's right. Yeah. So good. I had other questions for you about when you met Jesus, but you were seven and he mm-hmm. wooed you yeah. making mud pies. I love that. <laughs> he did. Yes. And I was going to say my mom was very instrumental in just bringing me to his heart and kind of mm-hmm. interpreting that scripture that was on my wall plaque oh. um, that I used to write that scripture out on everything. Commit thy way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Well, that's so <laughs> and good. I didn't even really know what all that meant. But I remember one night, my dad has been a pastor my whole life. In fact, he still pastors. And I was, it was one night while he was preaching. I just, I wrote it down for my mom. Again, I still have this little piece of paper where I oh. you know, wrote it to her. Commit thy way to the Lord. And she had the wisdom in that moment to turn over that little piece of paper and say, yes, if Christy gives her heart to Jesus, he will show her the way to go. And that's how actually I, the Lord kind of used that uh, scripture and my mom, you know, made it kind of become reality to me. It was so sweet. And that's the night I, I gave my, my heart to Jesus. That is so beautiful and so encouraging to everyone who is listening, who's a parent, like, mm-hmm. no, you, the role that we get to play and to have our eyes That's attuned, right. our hearts attuned for the moments that are there. Mm-hmm. How is Jesus That's wooing right. you these days? Well, um, really, honestly, um, I just lost my sweet mama. Um, yeah. She went to be with the Lord um, the night before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And um, the Lord has used suffering and, and grief in my life, um, in several different seasons, I can look back on it now. And it's just been one of the things that the Lord has, you know, I, I think that he uh, allows certain circumstances in our lives. And sometimes there's just pain and brokenness in the world that just yes. cause things. Yes. But I think always, there's always an invitation in, in it. Um, in whatever the hardship it is. And in this case, for sure, it is, um, I've never not had my mom before, you know, yeah. and there's a lot in that, of course, to give, give over to him and release to him, but also just feel, you know, it's okay to feel those things. Um, but I think, you know, I think suffering has I'm thankful actually to be able to look back on, um, whether it was, I, you know, experiencing miscarriages or, um, I, you know, had just loss of, um, relationship in ministry, um, or I had a hearing loss. I actually talk about that in the book that I went through. Thankfully the Lord healed that, but it was a very difficult season for me. It's any, it's hard on anyone to lose your hearing, but as a singer, right, it was terrifying, you know? But I think it's sweet, you know, to have this track record, I think, to look back on just how he's met me in suffering and how that has just been one of the most tender paths to his heart. And it's just a for it affords us something that nothing else in this life can afford us if we will see it for the invitation that it is. And then I think too, just I remember uh having a conversation with someone, um, right around the time when her, uh, she had ovarian cancer and it was right around the time when she was getting weary of the chemo. And we just knew that it was just maybe going to get rough. And, you know, someone shared with me, you know, he just said, he started telling me actually about their journey, um, of infertility and he, they were going to have a baby. They were so excited. And he said, you know, I just want to encourage you with your mom. You know, he said, whatever happens, he was like, you know, kind of what we were saying before. He's like, the true um, healing and the true outcome uh, is that he that he's with you in it, no matter what. Like he's he's with you. His withness with you is the the answer. You know what I mean? It's what we're really longing for, and that kind of has led me to this place of going like another way to say that really is 
his presence is his plan for us. Yes. <laughs> his presence is his plan for me when it comes to like going through grief with my mom. What, what's the plan? And it's like, okay, his presence. And even recently I've learned, I think I've studied this maybe a while ago, but it came back to me that a lot, you probably know this, like a lot in scripture, when it says his presence, it actually means his face. And you can, when you look in the original language, it's like his presence is, so you think about just being face to face or just being face. with. Yes. Yeah. It's just uh, so powerful. So that is definitely something that I'm in right now and how he's coming after me and, and I'm learning, I'm learning through it. Grief is a wild, wild thing. <laughs> so. It is. It is. It has a life of its own, its own yeah, timetable, yeah. its own yeah. rhythms. Yeah. But the with is everything. His presence yeah. is everything. That's, and that's the mm. promise. You're right. And when we come to rest in that, like we actually are promised suffering. And it is amazing mm -hmm. how how that seems to be one of his favorite tools for us to to actually mm -hmm. know him. Yeah. Bless yeah. you. So good. Thank you. Um, friends, if you want to hear more of Christy's story, you can listen to her podcast where she vulnerably and beautifully tells the story of her sweet mom. So I recommend that. Um, okay. I'm going to turn, I'm going to get a little lighter, though it's beautiful. <laughs> um, okay. I don't want to ask you what your favorite memory or experience is or something that brought you a lot of joy, but what's one of them? Okay. So, um, definitely in the last eight years of my life, I have fallen in love with horses. Ooh. I don't have, I don't have one. I wish I did, but it has just opened up something that I think the Lord wanted to open up in me. Even just a, one of my favorite memories that I go back to a lot is just being on a ride. And, um, we our our, our guide was, you know, telling us, okay, we're getting ready to go around this bend is everyone kind of ready? And we didn't know what was coming. <laughs> and, you know, we were all kind of beginners and we had been learning to lope the horse. Like we were trotting and loping. And, and I was just like, something in me was just like the whole experience, like coming alive. And, you know, we were kind of like, okay, what is it? You know? And, um, and as we kind of rounded this corner, we realized there was a, a river and we <gasps> just like, and it was fairly shallow. I mean, for the horses, it was probably up to their you know, their legs were in it, but like they were just, we were running through a, in river. The water. Oh. <laughs> through a river and we were all just like squealing like little kids. I mean, our pastor was ahead of me and it was like, he turned 10, you know, mm. and we were all just like screaming with delight. It was just the most precious thing. And since then I've probably, I've just had these experiences up until just recently, just having moments where it feels like the Lord just keeps putting me with horses and having these um, beautiful experiences that connect me to being a little girl again, but just being, you know, there's something in there that's like supposed to, to come alive. Yes. <laughs> and, it, and it definitely has through horses. So yeah, oh, that's, that's beautiful. That immediately came to my mind. He yeah. did the same with me. And really? I, yeah. And I, I really feel like horses kind of like have one foot on this side and one foot in eternity because yes. of the yes. way God uses them. So I'm going to ask, was that at Lost Valley Ranch? It was. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That, we had the joy of going there a couple times as well. So when I read that you loved it, I'm like, yes, yes. Yay. Yeah. I know. That's a dude ranch I out hope. in Colorado. That's, um, yes. Yeah. Some of our friends were, the uh, couple who ran it for a while and we enjoyed going out there with some other families for about like seven years in a row. And even oh. one of our daughters went out and worked there. Oh, wow. And so I've just, yeah, I've just kept having, and I'll get invited every once in a while to just go out to a retreat that someone's having there. And so I still feel like it's just this little thing, like the Lord just brings me back to these little moments to get to experience that. And it's just been, yeah, I love that you have had that. Yeah, there's something Experience. there's something holy about them, I think. Yes. I so agree. All right, shifting. 
I want to read something in your description of, of your recent album, This Is The Hour. Mm. And you wrote, we're living in an hour where you and I are having to pioneer through some of the most challenging cultural and spiritual landscapes we've ever encountered. And that's true. Um, yes, there are those who have gone before us, but this moment is new to us and it matters what we do with it. Your prayer over these songs was to foster a deep reconnection of our hearts to God in this hour in a way that helps us cultivate his presence in our daily lives in a real mm. and fresh way. Mm. And on this beautiful album, my favorite song currently is As For Me, Psalm 2. Yes, yes. And you wrote about that. Yeah. This is a beautiful reminder that God isn't anxious or fretful about the hour we are living in or the days mm -hmm. ahead. This is so important just to speak this out. He's not worried. Even when evil yeah. rises to threaten us, we can sit mm -hmm. in the same confidence that God sits in today. He, he made provisions for us and has a plan. And that provision and plan is a person, Jesus. Yeah. Um, in the song, you say the bridge of the song opens up in celebration of Jesus this king that God has set in place for the world. And just like the end of Psalm 2, there's an invitation. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in your name. They belong mm. to you, Jesus. That just puts my heart at rest hearing mm. that. Oh. I'm sure that it does it. other people that are. I have a question for you. On the YouTube video, mm. are those your daughters that are singing with you? Yes. Oh, yes. and that's, that's our son as well. And it is? Yeah, he's playing. Oh, yeah. my <laughs> goodness. Our... <laughs> what talented yeah, that particular... family. <laughs> that video is actually just the five of us. Yeah. Yes. Just, yeah. I so, knew it was so Nathan, but I wasn't us. sure. Yeah. Oh, what a yeah. cool thing to do. <laughs> um, yeah. You have a saying that I love that you put into a song. Always remember to never forget. Yeah. Can you... What do you mean by that? Um, yeah, it's really sweet, actually, how that came about. Because when the kids were little and I was, you know, being mom and often when Nathan would be like producing a record or recording, he we had a studio downstairs and he would mm -hmm. come upstairs, you know, and this is just when they were all like, I was in the thick of it, you know, and he yes. would come up and like, it, it just things would feel super out of hand and he would do this whistle and he would get everyone, all three kids would just like look towards him and he'd be like, always remember. And they would just be hanging on his words and he'd be like, to never forget. And so it was kind of started out as this little thing he would do that uh -huh. they kind of caught on to. It's like, oh, dad. But he, he is such an amazing dad. And he did such a great job when I was flustered of just sort of like getting him to like, hey, let's revert your attention. Like, let's just snap out of it yes, real quick. Yes, yes. And then they would usually just start laughing. And, I'm, and I'd always be like, okay, of course, he just comes in. And, you know, they're like, what's dad want? But then as we were writing this Lullaby album, it was so sweet. He's the one that kind of brought that up. And he was like, what about always remember to never forget? And, and he's like, I love that phrase. And he just remembered how the kids would respond to it. Well, then as the Lord does, it's so precious that right in that season when we were writing that record it was you know fast forward a few years when my when our girls were at the ages where they were really starting to look in the mirror a lot and just question am i what is my worth you know like who am i really and what do i have to offer the world and i you know you just the holy spirit tips you off as a mom like you know those things are happening and so i remember just sitting both of them down at that season and just um, started asking them, like, do you ever ask yourself questions when you look in the mirror? And they looked at me like, how does she know about the questions? You know, uh -huh. and they were kind of like, they kind of shook their head. Yes. Or like, yes. Like, you know, am I good enough? Am I pretty enough? And, you know, do I have anything to offer? And, and so I just said, well, I just want you to know when you look in the mirror, the answer is yes. Like, yes, you are beautiful. Yes, you are pure as gold. And so that song later, you know, when we started connecting the dots, it was like, oh, this is a beautiful song to go like, always remember to never forget when you look in the mirror, the answer is yes. Yes, you are pure as gold. Yes, you are beautiful. Always remember to never forget. And I've learned just as a child of God, 
that blesses his heart when we remember, you know, when we, when we don't forget that we're his and that our, our worth in him. And so, and then we even made it a waltz. Nathan was like, I can just see little girls, like even like in a nightgown, like dancing around to that, just the blessing of like learning to always remember to never forget. So yeah, that's where that came from. It's beautiful. It's so key. Thank you. Thank you. It's so core. Those questions come up, begin when we're young, but they don't go away. So like to always remember to never forget the answer is yes. Wow. I am sliding notes to the side because I have so much more that I would love to (laughs) dive in and because it's just so beautiful, but I know that we're coming to the end, but in the final pages of your book, you really dive in to identity. Mm -hmm. Um, and you say who you are is based on whose you are. Yeah. Why don't you say more about that? Yeah. Goodness. I think about even just back to those mud pie (laughs) moments with him of just that was really the beginning of when I was understanding my worth. And I think, you know, some of you listening might, you might have some of those memories sometimes that come back and you might think they were just everyday occurrences or they might not be related at all to like whose you really are. But what I've learned is to be able to look back on my story like that and to be able to see um, the places where my identity really was, um, he was highlighting it like through different ways he was coming after me. But I think to, to, to be able to, you know, tie that to him first and whose we are, whose we belong to, um, it guards us and protects us, I think, because it's just, it's, it's easy for me to every day to forget, you know, that it isn't about the stuff I need to get done today. It isn't about, um, even my dreams or plans or, um, all those things are good. They're good things. But too, I think it just safeguards us when we tie those things together, Yes, that they're like intrinsic and they, they go together. Mm -hmm. And that I think is a beautiful way to like, just always keep me in that place of living from him rather than for him. Mm. Yeah. That's such a good way to say it. Living from him versus for him. I'm going to read just the very end of this book, which you guys, you need to get when and you're saying you, people are asking the who, what, why, yeah. and you write, what is the why you ask? The answer to our why is found in the one who knows that some of life's best answers are questions. When Jesus turned and saw two men following, he asked them, what do you want? They replied, where are you staying? Come and see, he said. In living from our belovedness, our why in this life is always and only Jesus. Because the life we long for and the rest we need is forever found wherever he is. Mm. That is truth and beauty Mm. and goodness. Mm. And yes, drink that in. Mm. Christy, I'm wondering, there's uh, people that are listening all over the world and you know what life is like. You you wrote about that, all kinds of things going on, and maybe they are steadfast right now. Maybe they are in a place of grief as well. And I'm just wondering if you would pray for them. Mm-hmm. Yes. I oh, thanks. That. Great. Jesus, we love you. We thank you that you um, made a way for us to have life in you. And I just pray for anyone listening today and even over um, my own self (laughs) today, we pray, Lord Jesus, that we would have eyes to see you in these days, Lord, that you would give us ears to hear, that you would reveal yourself to us. Um, Even in the smallest ways that we don't expect, Lord, I thank you that you are a God that um, you're not mad at us. You love us. um, You don't leave us in our longing, Lord, you meet us right where we are. And even in our circumstances, even in real pain and hardship or whatever we're carrying today, Lord, thank you that you have not abandoned us in that, Lord, but so often they really are that invitation. So Lord, please 
help us to see the invitation that you have for us. Lord, help me to see that today. Just whatever it is we're carrying, mm, yes. that we would come close to you, Lord. And knowing that it's in that very place that we will find a path to your heart when we're willing just to come and, and, and get before you and to bring you everything that we're holding and carrying and just to release it to you. Thank you, Jesus. I've just, I've seen you do that over and over and over in my life. And I just pray that over these precious mm. women listening, whoever is listening. Thank you, Jesus, that um, you are faithful to do that. And I pray you'll be found faithful in their lives, Lord, and just that you'll give them that place of uh, discovery in you and getting to sit before you and, and, and learn and, and even just uh, be in union with you, God. That's what I just pray over all of us today in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. God. Oh, Christy, thank you so much. Thank what a you. life-giving conversation. My, my, I'm deeply encouraged and mm, so, <sighs> so friends it will be in the show notes how to find Christy musically with her book with her podcast and drink all these truths in you are loved the king is captivated by you till next time Still be my vision. Oh.